Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. So welcome to the podcast, everybody. Today we're talking cross-country qualifier. So we welcome back Archie. So last time we spoke, Archie, you were just contemplating actually getting this flight done. And now you've done it. So welcome back. Thanks for having me back, Simon. No worries. So for those who are new to flight training, towards the end of your training, you'll be doing a cross-country qualifying flight. For PPL, it's 150 nautical miles and two landaways at other aerodromes other than the airfield you departed from. And for Lapple, it's 80 nautical miles or one land away. So at this point, generally, you're at the end of your training in the sort of preparation stages for your test. For most schools, these routes will be predetermined by the uh, by the instructors. So they'll have flown these routes several times to make sure they fit the purpose for the exercise and the experience level of the student. There'll also be some preparation conducted with your flight instructor to ensure that you are indeed ready to do that flight and the conditions on the day are good to do so. So Archie, like most students this time of year anyway, um, you had a long wait for the conditions to align with your planned flight. How long were you waiting for? <sighs> felt like forever. Um, about two months for, <laughs> for this flight. So, um, you know, not as bad as some people. I know that there is somebody at the moment who's been waiting for 15 odd weeks to, do, <laughs> yes. to yeah. do a solo flight, but um, it still felt forever yeah it's definitely the look of the draw i mean we need the conditions to be perfect because we don't want you to have although it's likely you might come across some problems during the flight we want to try and limit those as much as possible so were you uh, actually nervous about taking this flight i know a lot of students are i i didn't really feel too nervous to be honest um the whole general thing was uh and and this is what a load of pilots had told me is that you're already being sent solo the school trusts you with in quite frankly, their aeroplane, which yeah. is, you know, very costly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I felt prepared for it. I'd done, you know, the, I, I'd done a section of the route beforehand, like you're allowed to. Yeah. And, uh, so my, my route down to Kemble was already ticked away. So I didn't really feel nervous at all. Put a, any kind of worries or, you know, bits that I was unsure about were kind of put to rest as soon okay. as I came in and, and I was talking to my instructor, we had our we had our briefing and you know, it was okay. So you just touched home on the point actually is that one of the aerodromes you are allowed to visit, yeah. um, the other aerodrome you will not have been to before. The reason why we do that is in order that you have something you need to deal with that's new, fresh to you. So your particular aerodrome would have been uh, Collington, Peterborough? Peterborough, yeah. So how, how did you find that? Uh, it was... Um, it was interesting. Uh, I mean, we'll get on to why it was interesting a little bit later on. But, yeah. uh, but like, for example, I'd always been used to having, um, you know, at every airport I went mm-hmm. to, I've gone to Oxford, mm-hmm. uh, Sywell, um, Wellsbourne, Coventry. Mm-hmm. They've all got, like, puppies on, on mm-hmm. and they're relatively long runways. Mm-hmm. Whereas Peterborough is, is this, you know, air ground unit that's, the runway isn't in the best condition so it was it was really interesting coming in and and landing there and you know there's no real taxiways you you just have to backtrack the full way of the runway it was was really alien to me but it was still very good to do i I really enjoyed it excellent so tell us about the pre-preparation you did on the day with your instructor so i mean just like any solo flight that we would do here um arrived sat down with the instructor, met the instructor. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was a new one for me, Kath, Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful lady you've met before. And, um, and yeah, we, we sat down, we, we went through, you know, the no tams of the day, which were, Mm -hmm. uh, for, for us, it was just a load of, uh, UAVs floating around. Um, Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, But not, nothing to worry about. Uh, did the weather briefing. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time it was, it was all fine. Um, you know, sunny days ahead at, at all the locations that I was going to. Mm-hmm. So tell us what sort of threat and error management you were looking at on, on route then. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so whilst I say it was like the weather was fine to, okay. for the, through the planning, um, on my route from Kemble to Peterborough, mm-hmm. I saw this massive, 
a uh, clump of cloud coming in uh, okay. from the north, right. which was, funny enough, the route that I was, I was <laughs> going to <laughs> yeah. take from Peterborough back to Coventry. Yeah. Uh, so just did what I, you know, had, had been told to by mm -hmm. any one of the instructors, which is, you know, identify it, mm -hmm. um, keep an eye on it, most of all. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was no threat to me uh, on that route. So, you know, I carried on to Peterborough. Uh, you know, at one point, I just have to turn ever so slightly uh, to keep, you know, the the minima within mm -hmm. limits but it was fine there okay. uh, so i think it was just constantly identifying it um and and taking actions to correct that on the way from peterborough to coventry though mm -hmm. uh you know that that one didn't go quite to plan okay. um as the weather had moved in a little bit more than i'd expected okay uh and you know i phoned up you guys i spoke to to my instructor kath i said this is the situation. Am I okay to continue? Mm -hmm. I said, I feel happy to continue, but I just want to check it's fine with you. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, if you feel happy, more than more than happy, you know, trust your judgment. Uh, and I said, what I will be doing is I'll be diverting my route mm -hmm. uh, on the way back. So instead of taking a direct leg, mm -hmm. uh, I would go via Sywell, which I knew was clear because that's the route yeah. I'd just come on. So you're just kind of dog legging. What yeah. You yeah, fine. Okay. And did you have any sort of backup plans if that didn't work out where you could divert to and things with the rare fields? Again, like it was really weird because Peterborough, as soon as I got out from uh, underneath all the cloud, mm. it was blue skies. You could you could yeah. see the sun shining. It was like a summer's day. So I was like, okay, right, you know, <laughs> Peterborough, I've just landed there. I can always divert back to there. Yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. And and even if I got to Sywell and I can continue, I've landed at Sywell before, Yeah, just there. It, it, it would have been fine. So, yeah, yeah, that was always in the back of my mind, but, you know, didn't, so didn't talk, need to do it. So talk us through your, your routing then. So, uh, what, the full route? As if I would, yeah, full yeah, route, okay. yeah. So, yeah. Um, start off by Coventry, mm -hmm. uh, leave normally over to, there's Drake on the day, okay. um, and um, then go sell them. Yes. Uh, head down to RF Chedworth, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that's all Bryce radar and, and all that. And then into Kemble, really nice, simple, straightforward route. Took me about 37 minutes, I think. Uh, so the wind was definitely favouring me on the day. Yeah. Um, Do you remember which runway you were on? I was on 08. Oh, right hand, yeah. 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 Uh, the, the hard one. <laughs> the hard one? Why the yeah. hard one? As in, because they have a grass one there, don't they? Oh, they do. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant the hard one, as in it was a difficult oh, way. No, 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 no. no. They, do, they do have a grass one indeed, parallel, don't they? So. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, um, we were in there yesterday, and we had to stop on the hard runway to let somebody land on the on the soft. So, well, on the, on the um, yeah, there it's amazing because obviously you have uh, where they get you to do your run ups. Yeah, uh, I had to hold position there, and and then someone came, must yeah. have been twenty feet above, just landing on on the grass runway. <laughs> I, I was it was wonderful there. Yeah. So, um. So so down to Campbell. Down to Campbell. Got a nice, um, nice cafe. Did you frequent the cafe? I, I did. I did go to the cafe. <laughs> uh, I was told to make it very quick, but um, yeah. you know, I, I got down there so quickly that I thought that I may as well, uh, yeah. you know, have have a quick sandwich there, which was very nice. Excellent. Um, then from Campbell, uh, heading up to Melton Mowbray, mm -hmm. uh, which was very, very slow. Yeah. It was directly opposite of the wind. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, it's it that's aviation for you. Mm. Um, but yeah, nothing really happened on that route. Uh, then from Melton Mowbray uh, over via Sywell. Mm -hmm. um, again, that's, this is when kind of blue skies started to uh, to come out and I was very shocked. It felt like I was back in summer. Yeah. Um, only thing notable that happened there was uh, there was another person doing manoeuvres okay. and I was constantly being told to, uh, you know, keep a good look out yeah keep now. a good look out and then yeah. i was like I can't, I can't see them because they they must be you know over by the cloud they're like okay just alter five degrees yeah it's fine yeah. um so did a did a few loops around there and then i've had si well really really nice and and into peterborough so approaching peterborough this is kind of when i i saw that there was this massive cloud coming in mm -hmm. uh so i was just constantly turning to to avoid that yeah um and then, uh, you know, Pete, Peter was actually quite hard to pick out from from the ground. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, it, yeah. it's uh, it's it's not yeah. that big of an airport. So, no. um, you know, before I knew it, I was like, oh, uh, you know, I'm I'm approaching uh, kind of final. So I said, can I overfly the runway on this one? And, yeah. And 
and, and circle back round and they were like yeah of course um, it's very difficult to spot and it does depend on what kind of direction you're approaching yeah. it from but it's incredibly difficult to spot Peterborough um, as I, I know I made that mistake <laughs> um, but yeah no it's difficult to find there's some noise abatement there as well isn't there yeah is, so the circuits are a little bit different but, um, yeah, but you've, you've kind of got that at uh, Campbell as well, haven't you? So it's not yeah, again, though, this was all covered in the, in the brief. In the brief. So yeah. I knew exactly, you know, I, the circuits would be different. There's a noise abatement here. So it wasn't any shock that I was yeah. getting there that they would say, you know, they, they didn't have to say, you know, watch your circuits because yeah. you know, there's a village there that don't like aeroplanes flying over. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we sort of talk about is... Um, what happens if it goes wrong now obviously you're trained on what to do if you get lost um we can't bloody ass loud i was loud yeah <laughs> um we kind of say to people um you know there's this thing about sky demon integration in flying these days into flight training now we are um introducing that into flight training but we want people to have the raw skills mm -hmm. on how to navigate so we kind of say to people on your qxc program your route into sky demon put it on the seat upside down and if everything goes wrong and you're under pressure yeah just use then, it you, you know use everything in your capacity to get there but don't cheat yourself by it's using yeah it. that's what i agree with i think yeah. um someone said that you should earn your right to use a gps yeah. and i yeah. think that's completely fine because as much as you could say oh what happens if the paper gets all scrunched up yeah. it, you know what happens if your ipad runs out of battery but i'm yeah. i'm a big believer in it i use four flight all the time to log my flights i've yeah. got it there as a backup yeah. Uh, on this case, didn't have to use it, but again, I think that's something that uh, students and pilots alike should. Uh, and I think the, the key takeaway from that as well is know how to use these things yeah. on the ground, right? Definitely. Because you know, when your capacity is reduced in the air, if it does go to a ball of chalk and you have to use it, you don't want to be trying to figure out how to use it whilst you're stressed. Completely. You know? so, it's um, and and also I I use it all the time for viewing NOTAMs because yeah, I, I program absolutely. my route in and it immediately says yeah. hey watch out because there's there's this event here there's like yeah. a weather balloon that's flying at this time yeah absolutely it's it's well worth it so what were the key takeaways for you for the flight um as in like advice to give no, uh, just, so, or, just or just key from, learning points for you what you what you got from it really uh hmm. I'd definitely say you know kind of plan ahead mm -hmm. uh i not that i didn't plan ahead but i think that if i hadn't have planned and hadn't have looked around and and seen what other airports are nearby i would have been extremely stressed yes. when i had to start turning to avoid yeah weather. No, that's true yeah. um but also uh the brief that you guys give is mm. really really slim mm. it's you go to this airport this airport and this airport mm -hmm. and then as a student you're kind of expected to to put in like, any markers not uh feature crawling but yeah for me for example uh as soon as i'd left um kemble and mm. uh and headed over to melton mowbray it was just go to peterborough and that's yeah. a 80 odd nautical mile yeah. leg so, so the, the idea of that is that we give you the route and you give us the route that you're gonna find. exactly and that's yeah. why I, yeah I, instead of just saying oh yeah i'm gonna deadhead for um yeah. 84 miles I, I was like okay right i'm gonna go i'm, I'm gonna integrate tracking vor into it i'm gonna mm -hmm. i'm gonna go via daventry vor and then I'll yeah. go to sywell yeah. um and then i'll make my way over to peterborough and, mm -hmm. and again through planning that was kind of a key point and i think the key thing to take away from that as well is that your planning will be vetted by your instructor yeah completely you know. so i know that before you left you'd done all your, your weather briefings you've gone through the aircraft documents no times all the normal pre-flight preparation and Kath had been through your route to make sure yeah. she was happy with it so I think the key takeaway is yes you will be given a brief which will be very slim but the preparation that goes into it before you actually set out on that flight no instructor in their right mind is going to send you on a flight when they know you're going to fly through a danger area and all the completely the yeah time, so. it, the instructor will let you make that mistake in planning and then mm. you'll get to correct it and and they'll show you you know oh this is where you went wrong they, they yeah. won't at all let you go up in the air and, and say which I think is again, it's reassurance yeah. that. But I think I think you need to make mistakes in your planning to realise yeah. where you went wrong as well. So, um, okay. So, is there any anything you would have done differently on that route if you did it again? Different. I mean, I want to do it so quickly because. Yeah. Um, but yeah, different different month to do it in. Yeah, it would have been nicer in, in, in <laughs> you know, June or so. Yeah. Um, 
No, I, I don't think I probably would have done anything differently. Uh, okay. Of course, there's stuff like, you know, I wish I'd made a, a neater approach into Peterborough. Yeah. But again, that was the very first time I'd been in there. It's yeah, very absolutely. hard to spot. And, um, but ultimately, you dealt with it, didn't you? And uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm here, you know, landed the plane safely, yeah, got my seat, shot, uh, sheet signed. Yeah. Um, they, they didn't say anything that, yeah. was, that was negative. So, so it, that, that's yeah. one key tip then, isn't it, for anybody doing a qualifier? Don't forget to bring your paperwork with you. Oh, bring your, I was checking <laughs> that. I was terrified. I was checking that the doors were locked like three times before I left because I didn't want you know the surprise of it opens and the then paper my paper blows out. out. <laughs> it's left somewhere over Drake Water. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so any any advice for anybody who's nervous about doing their qualifiers? You know, if they're doing it shortly or you know just worried in general about it. Uh oh. I reckon um, be confident. I said this on, mm. on the previous episode. Be confident mm. in your ability um, mm-hmm. because the moment that you switch off and you start thinking, oh, I can't do this, is the mm. moment that stuff actually goes wrong. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Your, your instructors are, are well aware of your ability in, quite frankly, probably better than you are. Yeah. Um, they've been flying for you know 2,000 hours, some of them, mm. uh, and, and that only goes up on you know, for, for others. Mm. It's nothing to be kind of afraid about um, when you're doing it. You 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 know how to fly the plane. You've already gone solo on X amount mm. of nav routes beforehand. Um, but with that, also be adaptable to change. Yeah. Um, as I did, I wasn't going to just fly straight through IMC conditions or, yeah. or go right up to the cloud and then turn around and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not good to continue. You, you identify it and then you're like, well, what do I do now? I need mm. to change my plan. I know that this route's clear. Mm-hmm. For me, it was via Sywell. For other people, that may be via whatever. You may need to go further north, mm-hmm. for example, on, on a route. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think exactly. definitely, you know, be be able to change and adapt. Now, I think the key thing about it is, is I remember when I was thinking about qualifying cross countries, that just the numbers and the number of airfields sounds like a big deal. It does, yeah. But if you think about it, it's three it's, you know, not that, it's not that it's big not of a deal. You do yeah. far more circuits than that in a single session. Exactly. So you can't, if you just break it down into individual flights and think, right, I've just got to get to Campbell. When I get there, I'm at Campbell, I'm safe. But even the individual yeah. flights, it's nothing to worry about. Like, yeah. what are you doing? You're flying the aeroplane. It's not like you're having to do yeah. any complex manoeuvres. It is, on yeah. your plan, it is basically just a straight line. Yeah, exactly. You, you don't have to follow signs to, to get somewhere. You just... No. No, you, no. You point, and if your calculations are correct, then... Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, exactly. And I think, uh, you know, with your calculations as well, it's just making sure that you're disciplined with mm. your flying, that you're checking your head and you're doing regular Frida checks and things and all yeah. that kind of stuff. That is what people get caught out with if they don't keep synchronising the compass and the DI and things yeah, like that. Yeah, completely. And then they end up, you know, a little bit off track and then they get panicky and all the rest of it. It's easily done. So I think, yeah, just trust the planning, follow the process, you know, and fly accurately. And then you should be Com- fine. Yeah, I... I, I don't really have anything else to say over that. Yeah. I think that's great advice. Yeah. So well done, by the way, getting it done. So oh, you're, thank you. Yeah. You're now that's... pretty much at the end of the course. So we've got a bit yeah. of revision to do. Yeah, a bit, and then hopefully... bit of prep. And then it's the exam, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a mock test. And then if you pass that, uh, then we do the exam. And when you pass that, a few it's, weeks yeah. later, a bit of paper in your hand. Great. And, and that's what I can't wait for. I mean, <laughs> I've um, uh, this week past gone i was determined to get um my cross-country qualified done so i was like right that's it you yeah know, I'm, I'm packing all my stuff i'm coming home for a week yeah, yeah. uh you know and, and i'll try get whatever i can done so uh, just to plug one of our other shows that we're going to be launching very shortly the aviator show which is, is basically we've got the podcast for students this is just for people generally interested in aviation or have already got licenses and it's going to be myself and other pilots flying around different airplanes trying to fly everything we can uh, just generally going out and have some fun it's not a teaching thing in any sense at all it's just literally private pilots not instructors in, enjoying the time just enjoying you know it's the end goal it's why we all do it um, so would you like to come on that show? Oh, I would I, it'd be a pleasure to. Can I be your first passenger? Oh, I, I don't know about that one. I think my parents may have something to say. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I, I was Billy's first passenger the other day and she says, you know that uh, there's a, one of her friends, um, Eva, she goes, Eva's going to be really annoyed. Really? Yeah. For, I was like, well, just tell her. The flight know. school owner that gets to well, fly all the time. Yeah, well, just, just say to her that, you know, she's the first non-pilot passenger. Yeah, and you not go. frame it a different way. You have, to, you have to do briefings and stuff for that. That's one thing I was looking at. The, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the skills test and yeah. having to to say your exit is is here and here so yeah. i'd say it's really important um i'll tell you a funny story about this actually because when we do our flight checkouts for the 28 day rule and mm. things like that um you know i have to do those as well and because i've done so many of them a lot of instructors just get to me a lot to don't worry just, about the briefing do it. So let's just go <laughs> you know so anyway the other day I, d- I did my first checkout um with will who's never flown me before and i got up to the hole did everything else and he was like well you know you forgot to do your uh, passenger your brief. brief i was like look you know every instructor <laughs> says don't anyway so next time i'll do a passenger you so yeah yeah he, you know it is important essential you know. item it is it absolutely is it absolutely is so anyway all the best for um your test and things because well, that's you. coming up soon i'm sure you'll smash it and um, we look forward to seeing you on the Aviator show as well and probably back on the podcast to tell oh, us how yeah, your skills there test we go. went. Yeah. <laughs> Title, don't be afraid of your, your PPL skills test. Well, something similar like that might be coming along oh, or might not be coming along. You yeah. never know. <laughs> but thanks for your time again, Archie. Pleasure as always. Well, thank you for having me, Simon. Yeah, no worries. All right, guys, take care and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.